Hello, cooking enthusiasts. Today, we finally have another recipe video. But, if you didn't check out last week's video, I highly recommend it. I made a pretty big announcement. I announced that I'm working on a self-published cookbook, and today's video is actually going to be a recipe that ends up in the cookbook, or at least this is the current version of the recipe. I'm probably going to tweak it a little bit before the book comes out, but this still worked pretty good. So, as the title of this video probably says, this is an egg-free ravioli recipe, and there are several reasons for this. The first reason is that for anyone who is allergic to eggs or is vegan, this allows the ravioli recipe to work perfectly without any modifications. The second reason is that I think it's an underrepresented style of Italian dumplings, where egg-based pasta is more northern, Durham and semolina pasta is more of a southern Italian thing. The third reason is that using a recipe that only requires water opens the door to using other flavored liquids, which I really enjoy. And finally, if you were going to turn this pasta dough into something like lasagna, fettuccine, or parpadelli, you would be able to dry it and have it be shelf stable. So, let's go on to the first big different thing about my recipe, and that is a custom flour blend. Again, this is inspired a lot by southern Italian cooking, but the ravioli mix is kind of a hybrid recipe. For simplicity's sake, it's equal parts semolina, all-purpose flour, and my little secret ingredient, ramen flour. Now, ramen flour is an alkaline-treated bread flour that I developed for my flavored ramen noodle recipe. The video for making that flour will be in the top of the video description, but if you don't feel like making it, you can substitute ramen flour for bread flour and a little bit of sodium carbonate. The next important thing about this flour blend is that once you weigh out the ingredients and combine them, you need to blitz them to be very finely ground. Getting the flour mix very fine in something like a food processor is going to help you achieve a consistency similar to double zero flour, which is very famous in Italian cooking. If you wanted to, you could make a big batch of this flour blend 
and it should be fine in an airtight container. When it comes to actually making some ravioli, I'll be testing with a lot of different flavored liquids, but for simplicity's sake, I would recommend you try just water or maybe some vegetable juice. I think a good batch size is based on 400 grams of the flour mixture. For that much flour, I use between 150 and 180 grams of liquid, which is relatively high hydration, but I think this dough needs it. So, measure out the maximum amount of water for the recipe, and only hold back a little bit if you're working in a very humid environment. I always end up using all of my liquid. Combine the dry and wet ingredients in a large bowl. You probably want to start with a fork, but quickly switch to working the dough with your hands. You don't need to develop gluten at this stage, but simply try to gather most of it into a cohesive dough ball. It's very likely that some of the flour or pieces of dough aren't going to incorporate, but don't worry about that yet. Once you have most of the dough gathered, put everything, including the unincorporated pieces, into ideally a vacuum seal bag or a Ziploc. If possible, vacuum seal the dough and let it hydrate for 30 to 45 minutes. Once the dough has rested, it's time to start working with it. I recommend working with half of this batch at a time. So divide the dough and any dry pieces and then reseal the remaining half. So I'm not going to lie to you. The ramen flour in this dough makes it pretty tough to work with, but that toughness is a trade-off for having a more resilient dumpling in the end. I highly recommend using an electric pasta roller like the attachment for the KitchenAid stand mixer, although it might be possible to use a hand-cranked machine. You're going to start what's called laminating the dough, so that's rolling it through the machine and then folding the strip of dough in half and passing it through at the same thickness. You want to do this, I would say, at least four times for the first thickness, and then you can reduce the size on your pasta machine after a final roll. Continue to do this folding and laminating process at least three times every time you reduce the thickness of your pasta machine. As the pasta gets thinner and longer, you may need to cut the piece in half to make it easier to work with. On my machine, number one was the widest setting, 
and I found that number five or six was a good thickness for ravioli. Once you have pasta sheets at a thickness you are happy with, you can make the ravioli. I am going to cover some tricks I use for shaping ravioli in a video next week. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the recipe, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching.